In today's video, we'll be covering how to create this really cool landing page using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And along with this video, we'll be designing three different screen sizes. So we're gonna be looking at desktop view, tablet view, and finally mobile view. And we're gonna make it responsive by the end of the video. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Before we get into the tutorial, there's a lot of important files that you're gonna need. Please make sure to check the link in the description, which will take you to a link in my website. And then on that website page, um, this will get you access to the GitHub repository, which will allow you to download the index.html file, the app.js file, um, the styles.css file, as well as the images and designs, which will be used for the remaining of this tutorial. So it's super important to have these so that you can follow along. If you don't have these, that's absolutely fine. Just make sure to have the images and designs downloaded um, just to make your lives easier to follow along with the tutorial. So without further ado, uh, let's get straight into the video. So the first thing we're gonna do is to go into our index.html file. Um, and what you wanna do is to create an exclamation mark, hit enter, and for the title, let's call it uh, beginner landing page. Um, just save that. That's looking good. The next thing that we want is a link to the font family page. So the font family that we're gonna be using is this one called Inter. You can get access to it on Google Fonts. And the three different levels we're working with is regular being 400, semi-bold being 600, and finally bold being 700. Um, so what you do is you basically pick the fonts that you want and just click on these three that I have here. Once you've done that, Come over to this tag here where it says link. Click on this copy button here. So that copies the links that you need. Go back straight into your um, coding uh, workspace. And then within that, go into just underneath meta, paste that, and then save it. By doing so, you now have access to the interfont, which will be needed for this tutorial. Awesome. So once you have all the images, designs, all the different files and the font families, we can now get straight into the actual build for this project. So the first thing that we want to do is to work on the nav bar. Um, so if we go into the designs, we're going to be working from top to bottom. So the first will be the nav bar. The second thing is the header itself. And within the header, we'll be focusing strictly on this, the content to the left here, and then to the right will be the image itself. Cool. So let's start off by creating the navbar. Within navbar, we want to create a tag called contents. Within contents, we want to create an image. Um, and then as a, a reference, we want to uh, click on the folder images, which can be found in the description of this video, and then click on mobile logo. And then let's just call it logo. And then underneath that, we want to create a div with the class name of list. And this list will be the tags here. So premium, free, about, and contact. So let's create an unordered list. And for each list item, we want an A tag. And we don't want to give it a location, so give it a hashtag. Um, and we also want to call it um, as the names that we gave it. So I'll just copy this a few times. So it was free, about, and I believe the last one was contact. Uh, let me just double check. Yeah, contact, sweet. Um, so once you've done that and created that unordered list within the contents, the next thing we want to do is to create a button uh, container. Within the button container, we want to create a button with the tag of sign in, and we want to give it a text of sign in like so. Um, and then underneath that, we want to create a, so if we go into the mobile view, we also want to create a hamburger menu. So in order to do that, let's call this burger menu container. And within that container, we want to create a class of burger menu. And then finally, we want to create a trigger. So we'll call it burger trigger like so. Awesome. So that is essentially the um, creation for the nav itself in terms of its HTML uh, template. Once you've done that, the next thing that we're going to be working on is the header, which is having the content 
as well as this really cool uh, 3D design of headphones. Um, so underneath nav bar, let's call it as header. And then within header, we want to create um, main contents uh, class div. And within that div, we also want to create another one called header contents. And then within header contents, we also want to create a class of heading. And within heading, we want a H1 of copyright. And we want a second heading. This time, give it a class name of blue. And we'll call it free music like so. But doing this, it distinguishes between the blank H1 with no class as being the black color. And then the one with the class of blue will be the specific one to be changed into the color of blue like so. So once you've done that, the next thing we want to do is create a class of paragraph. Within that class, we want to create a P tag. And just to save time, I'm just going to copy and paste it from the reference uh, material that I came up with before the, uh, making this recording. Um, and then once you've done that, we want to also create a group with the class name of buttons. So within buttons, it will be these two here being start here, as well as free samples. So let's do that right now. Awesome. Okay. So button start here and we want to call it start here. And we also want to make, make a second button. And this time we want to call it free samples and call it free samples as the text. Sweet. So once you've done all of that, the next step is to actually have the image of the headphones in the page itself. So underneath this div here, which is linked to uh, main contents, I've just noticed that the header contents is supposed to be wrapping the heading paragraph and buttons. So what I might do is copy this um, and paste it under here, save that. So now we have the header contents, which is just looking at the contents itself. And then we can add in the headphones as a separate tag as part of the main contents parent div. Awesome. Um, so let's call it headphones. Like so. Actually, I'll just call it headphones. It's one word. Um, and then as the source, I'm going to link it to headphones.png. And then as the alternative, let's call it headphones. Like so. Okay, um, that is basically what we need. The next step is to add the style sheet. So just create a link like so. Within the href, we want to link it to the styles tag, uh, which is this one. Save that. And then another thing that we want to do is to add the JavaScript file. So in order to do that, you go underneath your body tag, type in a script. And then within script, give it a source of slash app.js. So that's linking it to the app.js file, which was created here. Awesome. I think that is pretty much it with the index.html. So let's get straight into actually styling it. Awesome. So we are now in the styles page. So the first thing we want to do is to manipulate the actual body tag itself. Um, so within body, we want to set the margin to zero. We will also want to set the padding to zero. I'm going to set the overflow to hidden. Um, and we also want to set the font family to enter and set it to sans serif, which again can be found. And the instructions of this can be found at the start of the video. If you've missed it, that's totally fine if you have, but please make sure to follow from the start if you haven't. And we also want to set a max height of 100 vertical height. Like so. Awesome. Um, so once you've created your body, the next tag we're going to be looking at is the nav bar. So within nav, let's give it a display of flex. Let's set the flex direction to row so everything is horizontal and not vertical. Um, we want to set the align items to center so that everything is in the middle. We also want to justify the content to center, which again helps keep everything in the center. We also want to give it a padding of 2 rem so that it's not too close to the edges of the uh, canvas. 
Um, and then another thing we can focus on is the actual contents itself. We want to give it a display of flex, align items to center. We also want to justify content to space between, not space evenly, space between. Um, give it a width of 60 rem. We also want to give it a padding of zero to the top and right, uh, sorry, zero to the top and bottom and two rem to the left and right. And we also want to set a position of relative. So now if we come over to our port here, click on go live and hopefully we can start to see um, the changes occurring. Um, there we go. So we have the nav bar, which is starting to look really nice. We also have our links here um, as the unordered list. And finally, we have our sign in button. Perfect. That's starting to look really good. So what I might do is actually drag this out just so you can see it better. Awesome. Um, sweet. So let's keep moving on. The next thing we want to do is to manipulate the actual logo itself. We want to give it a padding of zero. We also want to give a margin of zero. Set the cursor to pointer. We also want to set a transition of 0 0.5 seconds all. Um, you'll see why I've got that in later in the video. Um, we also want to give it a hover effect so that when the user puts the cursor over the actual logo tag itself, it will do something really cool. Let's set the transform of giving it a scale so it increases as in increases in size slightly and we also want to give it a transition of 0 0.5 seconds oh let's save that let's get straight back into um, what we've created so now if i put the cursor over sound lab oh why is that not working i don't know hang on did i call this wrong i may have but that's okay let's try and figure out why that's not working Oh, it's because I never gave it a class name of logo. My bad. So please make sure to change that in your index.html file. Um, so if I go straight back into this creation that I have, and if I put the cursor over Sound Lab, we now have this cool looking animation, which is starting to look pretty cool. Awesome. So that is a little of a sneak peek of some of the animations that we'll be creating. Um, so let's move forward um so we've got the logo working and it's looking really good the next thing we want to do is to work on the unordered list um, let's set the display to flex we want to set the flex direction to something like row um, we want to align items to center justify content to center as well set the padding to zero the margin as well to uh, zero and then within each list item itself, I want to manipulate it as well. So the list style, I want to get rid of that as well. And finally, give it a padding of zero to the top and bottom and two rem to the left and right. So if we go straight back into the file, we can now see that the unordered list is spaced apart um, and it's starting to look really um, clean and nice as the nav bar. Um, so let's keep um, deep diving into what we can create from it. So for each A tag, let's give it a text decoration of, my spelling is not good today. That's okay. Of uh, none. We also want to give it a color um, with the hashtag 828282. Um, we want to give it a text transform of capitalize. We also want to give it a font size with a clamp between the values of 13 pixels, um, dependent on it being two vertical width and the max being uh, 16 pixels so that it is responsive and changes in size depending on your screen. Um, and we want to give it a transition of 0 0.1 seconds for all. We want to give it a font weight of 400. And finally, the border bottom, let's give it a solid of zero pixels with the hashtag 5D64E4, which should give it this nice blue color. So let's see how that's starting to look. 
Sweet. So now if I put the cursor over it, that is doing nothing. That's okay because if we go straight into a colon hover, this is when we can start to give some animation to the actual hover effects of those A tags. So let's give it a color of hashtag um, 5D64E4 that I made before. We also want to give a border bottom of solid the three pixels with the hashtag of 5D64E4, same color as before. And we also want to give it a transition of 0.1 seconds for all. And I don't know why that's in capitals. There you go. Awesome. That's looking good. So now if we go straight into our creation, we have our nav bar. And now when we put the cursor over a particular A tag, it now turns blue and it has this really cool um, border at the bottom. It looks super clean and really cool. I'm really liking that. Awesome. Let's move on. Um, with working on the next button, which is this sign in button, which should be fun to make. Um, so in order to do that, let's create a, the button tag that we created before in the index.html file with the class name of sign in. We're gonna set the padding to one room for the top and bottom, and then the two RAM to the left and right. We're gonna set a text transform of capitalize. We also wanna set a background color of hashtag one, six, one nine two nine that should give it this nice dark gray color then for the text color itself i want to give it a white color um let's set the border radius to one rem let's set the border to none set the cursor to pointer let's set the transition to 0 0.5 seconds all Let's set the font weight to 400. And finally, let's give it a responsive uh, font size using the clamp method of 13 pixels as the minimum between a value of two vertical width and the max being 16 pixels. Awesome, so if I save that, let's see how that's starting to look. Wow, that's starting to look really, really cool. I now want to create some hover animations to it. So if we get back into our styles.css, let's create a button dot sign in with a colon hover to give it the hover effect. Um, we want to create a transform of scale. Uh, let me change that scale of 1.05. And we also want to give it a transition of 0 0.5 seconds for all. So now if we go straight back into it, there you go, it now increases in size as the user puts their cursor over it. Same thing for the logo. And that's starting to look really, really good. So that's essentially the nav bar designed for the desktop uh, setup. Um, so once you've done that, we can now get straight into the header, which is this part here. Um, so for the header tag, let's give it a display of flex. We want to align items to center. We also want to justify content to center. The position to relative, there we go. All right, cool, let's move down. Let's work on the main contents class that we created, set a display of flex, align items to center, justify content to flex start. We also wanna set the width, oh, the width to 60 rem, which is the same width the value I set for the nav bar. We also wanna set a height of 65 vertical height. And we also want to set a padding of zero for the top and bottom and 4M for the left and right. Awesome. So now let's target the actual um, header content here. Um, so within header contents, we want to give it a display of flex, align items to flex start. We also, we also want to justify the content to flex start as well. Um, set the flex direction to column. We want to set the position to relative. And we also want to give it a Z index of one, like so. Um, the next thing we want to work on is the actual paragraph. Um, so within that paragraph, we want to give it a width of something like 28 rem. Awesome. Um, so now let's target each um, 
font type. So the first being H1, let's set a padding of zero, a margin of zero, a text transform of capitalize. And we also want to set a font size of being a responsive value. So between 70 pixels being the minimum value of a range of eight vertical width and the maximum being 90 pixels like so. Once we've done that, next thing we want to do is to target the blue value. We want to give it a text transform of initial. And we also want to give it a color of hashtag 5D64E4. All right, sweet. So once you've done that, next thing you want to do is work on the P tag. Give it a margin of one rem for the top, zero for the right, two rem for the bottom, and zero for the left. Um, we also want to give it a responsive font size with the clamp method with a minimum value of 15 pixels between two vertical width as the range and 20 pixels as the maximum. Cool. Now, the next thing we want to do is to target the actual headphones here. Um, so let's do that. So image.headphones. I'm going to set the height to auto. I'm going to set the width with a clamp method of 20 rem as the lowest value between 50 vertical width as the range and finally 45 rem as the maximum. Set the position to absolute so that it's not impacting the um, contents to the left. I'm going to set a top value of zero so that it's stuck to the top. Um, I want to set a right value of zero and finally a Z index of zero. So let's see how that's starting to look. That's looking really good. And as you may notice, using the clamp method and the way I've structured everything. Um, so if I increase or decrease the size of the window, it's very responsive. Um, the font sizes decreases because of the clamp method. And yeah, it's starting to look really good. Um, so let's get straight into styling these two buttons at the bottom here. Um, so in order to do that, let's work on the start here button. Um, so within that, let's give it a padding of one rem, for the top and bottom, three rem for the left and right. Give it a border radius of one rem. We also want to give it a background color of 5D64E4 like so. Give it a color value of white. We also want to give it a border of none. So get rid of that border. We want to set a text transform of capitalize. Um, we also want to set a cursor for pointer. We want to set a transition of 0.25 seconds for all. And finally, we want to set the font size to have, to have a clamp value. Um, between the two values of 15 pixels, two vertical width as the range, and 20 pixels as the maximum. Okay, that's starting to look good. So if we go straight back into the design, that's looking awesome. The next button we're going to work on is the free samples one here. Um, so if we go down here, but before I do that, I might give it some functionality for the sake of it. Uh, so start here, colon, hover. We want to give it a transition of 0.25 seconds for all. And we want to transform it and scale it up by 1.05. So if we go straight back into our file, um, if I put the cursor over the start here button, it should increase in size. There we go. That's looking awesome. I'm loving that. Um, so the next thing we want to do is to work on the second button, which is the free samples button. So go button dot free samples within free samples we want to set a padding of actually you know what i can pretty much copy this copy and paste that i'll just fix up the syntax um, for color instead of white i'm going to give it um that dark gray color that i had which is 161929 um the background color we want to create as being transparent um capitalize pointer that's looking good so now if i go into it yep that's starting to look really really nice awesome i'm really stoked with the way it's looking once we have done that the next thing we want to do is to create a hover to that so let's put in button dot free 
samples, colon, hover, and pretty much do the exact same thing as before. So we'll just copy and paste it there and save it. Let's see how that's starting to look. So now if we put the cursor over free samples, it has this really nice hover effect to it. Same goes with start here as well as the nav bar. Awesome. So that's basically the desktop view. As you can see, it's quite responsive when you change the size of it. The next step is to work on the actual tablet view. You may notice once it gets to a certain distance, the nav bar starts to creep in and the sign in button gets distorted. So we're going to try and fix that now. So let's put it in roughly this size here. Um, in order to do this, what you want to do is to create a media query. So in this case with the tablet effect, all you need to do is type in at media screen. And then after typing that in, you want to type in end brackets max width to be 1000 pixels. What this statement means is anything less than 1000 pixels, everything within the two uh, brackets, the curly brackets rather, will be implemented. Um, so in that case, what we can start to do now is to start working with that, um, as well as starting to put in a burger menu, which will also be used for the mobile template. Okay, so the first thing what I might do is to uh, focus in on the button container that we created in our index.html file. And what I might do is set a display of flex, align items to center, justify content to center. Once you've done that, the next step is to start working on the burger menu container. So what we can do now is type in burger menu container. We want to set the display since it's set to we haven't set it to none yet. So what we can do is with the dot button, uh, sorry, burger menu container display to none. So that way when it's in desktop, the, but, uh, the burger menu is not displayed. So with the burger menu container, when it's within the tablet dimensions, we want to set it to inherit. So it gives it the original form that I had. Um, and then with the content itself, we just want a basic shape, so set it to nothing. But then once we do this, we want to give it a width of something like 30 pixels and give it a height of 20 pixels. Let's set a margin of something like uh, zero for the top, right, bottom, but one rem for the left. And then we also want to set the position to relative like so. We'll save that. All right, so the next step after creating the and working with the burger menu container is to actually create the trigger. So with the burger trigger, what we want to do is to set a position of absolute, set the content again, since we're just creating a, a square slash rec rectangle in this case, just set the content to nothing, but then we can start working with dimensions. So with being 30 pixels and the height to 20 pixels, we also want to set the cursor to pointer um, and the background color. Let's set it to red just for this uh, instance, just so you can start to see where that's starting to appear. So as you can see, the red uh, square here that I created has been generated by the burger trigger, which has been supported by the burger menu container, which is the parent. And there we can see it start to appear and that's starting to look really good. In this case, I'm just going to change the opacity down to something like 0.5 so we can start to see the strokes underneath. Um, so in order to work with the strokes, um, what we can start to do is to start manipulating the actual burger menu itself. So just type in burger menu and we want to focus in on the after element. In this case, we're creating a shape. So for content, just set it to nothing. For width, set it to 30 pixels. For height, set it to 5 pixels. For background color, we want to set the color to 161929. For the position, we want to set this time to absolute so that we can start to move it around and a transition of 0 0.25 seconds all. So if we save that and if we go back into our design, we can now start to see a black stroke starting to appear. Say, for example, if I want to change the height to 10 pixels and go back to it, 
we can start to see that increase. But in this case, for a burger a stroke with a menu, that's too large for me. So I'm going to change it back to five pixels and put it back to how I had it before. Awesome. That's starting to look really good. So that's the first stroke. Now we do the exact same thing, but so we'll just copy and paste it, change it to before. And once we do that, the next thing that we want to do is we want to create a transform and translate in the y direction of 15 pixels so that it's not overlapping. Now, if we go back to it, we can now start to see a second stroke appearing. Awesome. That's looking really good. And as you can notice, if I put my cursor over the burger menu, the first thing that's being fired is the actual burger trigger. So once we go into JavaScript, we'll make sure that on click for the burger trigger will activate the open state for the burger menu and then also closing it. So it's really important to have this here. Um, if it's not working for you, you can always change the Z index value to something like five or something that's higher than uh, the one that you've set it for the burger menu. But in this case, the way I've structured it, it should be working like so. Okay, cool. The next thing we want to do is to start manipulating the uh, unordered list here. I don't want it to be present in this menu. I want it to only be shown once the burger trigger is clicked on. So in order to fix that for the unordered, oh, sorry, for the unordered list, I want to set the position to rel uh, absolute so that I have full control of where it is on the canvas. Let's set the left position to one rem, so it's left of the canvas. Let's set the top to zero, so it's fixed to the top. Set the visibility, in this case, to hidden. Set the background color to white. We want to set a padding for the top and bottom to one rem and the left and right to zero. We also want to set the opacity to this instance as zero. And we want to also set a transition of 0 0.25 seconds all. So what's happened now is if we go back into our canvas, the unordered list is no longer there and everything is pushed back to the original position. That's starting to look really good. And what I might do is come back to our burger trigger and just get rid of the background color because we no longer need it anymore. And I'll also delete the opacity. Cool, let's see how that's looking. There we go, that's looking really clean. Now we can start working with um, the animations for opening the burger menu as well as working with JavaScript so that it is functional. Awesome. So what we can also start to do is with li list, I want to change it so that it is zero for the top and bottom, but then for the left and right with the padding to be one RAM, um, just so they're more spaced in a way that suits a tablet size. Perfect. Um, so once we've done that, the next step that we want to work on is to add what or give an insight as to what the active states could look like. So what we might do is inspect, inspect the page. Let me just fix this up for you guys. I'll change it to responsive. I'll zoom out. There we go. Okay. So what we'll do is come over to burger menu and we want to add in a second class called active. Once you've done that, the next one is to go into the unordered list, which is this one here. We want to add in a class list called active, like so. Once you do that, the final one is to go into the sign in button, which is, uh, there it is. Um, we want to add in a second class as well called active. So once you've added in an active class for the burger menu, the sign in button, and also the unordered list, we can start to style those and see the changes um, once the burger menu is activated. Cool. Okay. So what we can start to do now is for burger menu dot active, I want to transform it and we want to translate in the Y direction of 7.5 pixels so everything is in the centered in order to create the cross what we can start to do now is to activate the strokes that we made before with the after and before what we want to do in this case is transform it so that it rotates at 225 degrees we also want to translate it so that the y is in the zero 
direction and also the x direction of being zero what i might do is just so it's easier you can start to see the changes occurring over here um hopefully that makes sense i'll just close that perfect um so then the other stroke we had was before so what i might do is just copy this exact same statement but change it to before and with the rotation put a negative on it <clears throat> So it should go in the other directions. There we go. We have this nice uh, X going on, which the user knows um, as the open state. Awesome. So what we can do now, once you've done that, is to go into the UL state that we added in. So with the unordered list, we added in active state. So now what we can do is for the UL, we want to add in a class of active since that's what we'll be adding for the functionality once we get into JavaScript. For the visibility, let's set it to visible. Save that. That's not appearing. That's because the opacity was set to zero. So in this case, I'll set it to 100%. We can now start to see the unordered list appear and that's starting to look really cool. Um, and we also want to give it a transition so that it's got some motion to it when it's activated. Let's change it to 0 0.25 seconds. And then the final one was the button dot sign in. We added in an active state, so we'll add that class. So if you're confused about that, if we go into our button container for the button class itself, we added in a second class being called as active. Um, so in this case, let's set the visibility to hidden. We also want to set the opacity to zero. And finally, the transition to be 0.25 seconds for all. Let's save that. Perfect. So this is what the open state for the nav bar will look like. Um, what I can do now is uh, close this up, bring this back in. So the iPad view, or rather the tablet view is in place. And as you can see, the animations are working like we want it to. So what I might do is refresh the page and then this will put the nav bar back into its closed state, which is the default when the uh, user lands on the page. I'm just gonna do that like so. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move into JavaScript. Um, so let's do that right now. So we're now in JavaScript. Um, so what we can start to do is to start focusing on the activation for this burger menu. What I might do actually is go back into the inspect element. I changed my mind. I'm going to bring this out a bit and just pull this in a bit and go into the console. Um, so what we can do now is for the, let's just console log something just to make sure that it's working. Let's put in hello. And this should hopefully appear that is working. Perfect. So what we can do now is start to hone down on these elements that we created as well as the uh, burger trigger since that's the first layer the, that the cursor is on. Um, so in that case, I'm gonna create a const of the button trigger with the button trigger i want to be able to grab that class for dot burger trigger and to make sure this is working um if you're not sure uh what you can do is come back into the console and we can console log button trigger like so and that should hopefully appear yeah it appears that means it's working fantastic and we can do the rest for the active states that we created. So the first one was uh, the button itself being the burger menu. So let's get the document query selector so that we can actually grab it from the DOM as being burger menu. We also want a list. So we wanna grab that as a query selector from the UL element. And then finally, we want to grab the sign in button and give it a query selector of button with the class name sign in like so. Okay, so what we've done is we have grabbed the burger trigger and then these three elements here are the active state classes that have been added so that this, um, these styles can be applied once the button is fired.
Um, so let's get straight into that now. So, so what we want to do now is to grab the button trigger since that's the first thing the user lands on. We want to give it an event listener with the functionality of it being a click event. We want to create an arrow function. And within that arrow function, this is when we can start to toggle the active class to each element that we have on the page. So for example, with button dot class list, I want to toggle it so that each time the button triggers fired, a value of active is added to the class. We also want to do the exact same thing to the list and give it an active state. And finally, we want to give a sign in class list of toggle to be active. Once you save this, you will notice that as soon as the user clicks on the burger trigger, which is this value here, this function will fire and add an active state to each of these three elements which have been grabbed from the DOM. So what we can do now is come back over to our burger trigger. And if we click on it, we now have this really cool effect going on. And that's looking really cool. We might bring that in a bit. At this stage, um, I want to give it more transition effects. So what we can do is if we come back into our style.css, what we can do is give it a transition of 0.25 seconds for all and do the exact same thing for all the other elements. And let's see how that looks. So if we click on it, we have this really cool looking animation and that's starting to look really cool. Um, what I might also do is go back into the burger menu strokes and just make sure that, oh, that's why it's not working. We want to make sure that the transition is set to those values, not transform. Um, so if we close it, the animation is played throughout the, both the open and the active state. So in order to see this happening, what we can do is come over to the inspect element. I'll bring this out a bit come over to our burger trigger and upon clicking on it you'll notice that the burger menu the sign in and also the unordered list will create an active state so if i click on it an active state is added if i click it again the active state is removed so that's essentially what the javascript functionality is for this video and this is the tablet view the next step is to create the mobile template template um, so what we can do now is change it to an iPhone 12. As you can see, it's quite messy. Um, so what we'll do now for the remaining of this video is to fix this up. So what we can do now is to create a second media query. So we'll go media screen and max width of something like, let's do 700 pixels. So what this is saying that anything that is less than 700 pixels, everything within these curly brackets will be applied. So let's start targeting the main content. Um, so with main content, or rather main contents, create a flex direction instead of row, but set it to column and save that. Might actually bring this out a bit so you can see it better. Um, and bring that down. And I'll also set this to uh, fit to window. Yeah, that's looking good. Um, and we also want to give it a padding of something like zero to the top and bottom and also two RAM for the left and right. Save that. The headphone image, I want to make sure that it's uh, at the bottom on the co of the contents rather than next to it. So what we can do is for image.headphones, I want to set the position to initial. I want to set the width to 100%. I also want to set the height to auto um, and there you go. That's been dragged to the bottom. That's looking really good. Um, another thing that we can do is fix up the nav. I've noticed that the padding is too close. Uh, rather, it's too far apart from the edges and the sign in button is sort of skewed in a weird position. So in order to fix that, we can change it to have two RAM for the top and bottom and zero for the left and right. Um, so as you can see, that's pulled it back in and the sign in button looks a lot cleaner in this instance. Um, and then another thing we can do is to fix up the H1 value. Let's give it a font size of, I won't give it a clamp, but maybe something like 50 pixels. Yep, that's starting to look good. 
But again, the content is a bit all over the shop, so I'll fix that up. With the paragraph, let's give the width value to set it to auto. So that should pull everything back in, which it does. That's looking amazing. Um, with the font size, I actually might change it to 55 pixels. Yeah, that looks really good. And then underneath paragraph with the buttons, I'm going to set the display to flex so that the buttons should be next to each other, which it is in this instance. That's looking amazing. And in order to fix up the text, what we can do is to manipulate and work on the padding. So let's target um, the free samples button first for one rem for the top and bottom. And let's do something like two rem for the left and right. That's pulled it back in. It's working, but I just want to make sure that it's working for both buttons. So I am going to do the exact same thing for start. Yeah, save that. That's pretty much the end of the video. I hope you guys learned something. Um, again, we were able to create a desktop view that is interactive. We also have a tablet view, um, which is both responsive and have some really cool animations. And finally, a mobile view. So if you guys have any questions regarding this design or something about the code, please let me know in the comments. Um, I'd be more than happy to help you out. And in the meantime, I will catch you guys in the next video. See you later.